Okay, today I'm going to be working on this giant brand of Chinese chainsaw. Uh, I think it's a 52cc model, this one. And the oil pump has failed on this one. Uh, seems to be a fairly common thing in these Chinese chainsaws for the plastic gears and stuff that wear out. But I mean, this whole saw is about $70, including postage. So basically, if you, you know, just want a saw for the garden or something, I just wanted a smaller saw to go with my big one, just for cutting limbs and stuff. And um, they're not that bad value if you're willing to fix them occasionally and then, you know, throw them out eventually. Uh, certainly not going to last like a decent brand saw, but they are actually better than some of the earlier Chinese ones. But yeah, unfortunately this one, still cutting fine, but it's it started using hardly any oil. So I thought it was time to pull it apart and have a look at the oil pump. Um, I've actually had this one to bits because I had to order the pump in. So I've already got it dismantled. Now the way to get, get these apart, you've actually got to take the, where are they all, the, the sprocket and clutch assembly's got to come off this uh, to get into it, which all that used to sit on here. Uh, where's the rest of it? That's the other part of the, the clutch there. And what you've actually got to do, you can see that says off and points in a like, clockwise direction looking down on it because it's a reverse thread. So what you've actually got to do is remove the, the uh, spark plug, which I'll just put all this back together to keep it together while I was waiting for the parts. But you've got to remove the spark plug here and actually have a bit of nylon rope. Make sure the piston's down a bit. You can always use the pull start to move the piston around a bit. And we'll just shove some nylon rope in there. I'll show you later when I put it back together I'll have to do the same thing but basically you want to put some nylon rope in between the the top of the piston and the, the cylinder head basically the top of the cylinder um, so that when you start actually having to bang this um, clutch and sprocket bit loose um, the piston will come up and actually crush onto the the rope which is it's, you know it's hard enough to stop the piston moving but without doing any damage to anything um, so basically yeah the oil pumps hidden Originally had a cover and stuff on it. It's got a plastic gear. That's the actual pump. This silver bit here with a, a sideways sort of gear. And it's got this other plastic gear that goes into it. And yeah, when I'm turning that, it's not doing an awful lot. It is still turning a bit. So I'm not sure if the actual well, the plastic gear doesn't look too bad in this one. It does still seem to turn it somewhat. So maybe the actual pump has failed. So that's behind this. I think that does it go on the top of that. Yeah, it was in behind that plastic plastic cover. And then on top of that, we've got a little bearing there. And how did the rest of this go on? I think this here, this sits on top of the, or does it sit under that? It must sit on top, oh no, the other way around, is it? That might be it. That would be it. Turn it anti-clockwise if I want it back on there. So what you've got to basically do is while this is still on there, is get something like a small cold chisel type setup. And once you've got your rope in there and, and jam the, the piston up onto the rope, you've actually got to stick this into the side of this piece, the chisel, and then start banging it with a hammer. Normally, uh, once you bang it around a bit, it'll sort of be fairly springy while it's pressing on that nylon rope. It will, once it releases, they normally just come straight off. Uh, but this one was actually really tight. I had to keep banging it round and round. I think I had to get a couple of rotations out of it before it came loose which is pretty annoying, but I don't know if they'd stuck it on with something, some Loctite or something. And when we put it back on, I'm going to have to yeah, basically wind it on the opposite way, anti-clockwise, and then bang back against this. Bang it until it's nice and tight, like you can tighten it pretty tight, and then just bang it a few times to with a chisel or something, just to make sure you've got it on super tight so it can't come off again. But anyway, we'll get all that out of the way. And get this cover, lots of nice... Nice oil all over everything here. Now on eBay you've got a, um, I don't think anything came up under this brand. There's probably, you know, multiple other saws that are identical to these ones with different brands. So what did it come up as? It came up as oil drive pump kit for Chinese chainsaw 45, 52 and 58 cc. So hopefully I'll put a uh, photo on this video somewhere showing what it looked like on eBay. But they are available on eBay, so they come as a 
a kit. It's basically, I pulled this saw apart just to make sure everything looked the same. But it comes with a whole whole lot of it basically. The cover, got the plastic cover, got the, the rubber hoses that go back into the, I guess sit in the sump basically of the, the oil tank. We've even got a little filter for the oil oil line inside the tank there. And yeah, then we've got our actual pump here and gear. So I'll be replacing both of those. I'm not sure what's actually faulty. And yeah, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'll bother changing any of the hoses or anything. That must be that little one there. Oh, yes, that goes. Oh, so that's the hose that comes out of the pump here. It mightn't be worth replacing that if it's got to come out with a pump anyway, so. Looks like that just pops out. I mean, it's possible even something like that's actually clogged up, but anyway, I guess we'll keep all those bits, keep the new bits together in the bag for now, so I know which is new and which is old. And yeah, even the plastic cover there, which in some ways, I don't know if that's warped or anything. Anything's possible with Chinese plastic, so might even be worth replacing a whole lot. Looks like we need some small Allen keys here to, to get the pump itself out. Oh, that's the one. That's a four millimeter, I think. So if it was in the right in the right little bit of the packet, the right slot, it certainly looks about four millimeters. So it should just be a matter of undoing this and putting the new one in its place. But is there, it must be another hose here, there's another hose down under there I can see. So it looks like this is the pump hose in there, up there, out there, and this shaft I guess off this just rotates some sort of worm wheel or something in there to pump it slowly. So like I said, I'm not sure what's actually failed. Usually the plastic gear that goes around the motor shaft, the crankshaft is what fails, but this one doesn't look too bad. So it could be something internal in the pump. But either way, you can't expect too much, I guess, are on a cheapo saw. I can see that actually sucking that little bit of oil in there. So the pump pump may be alright. It's got a bit of foam around the... Probably to keep the dust out. Or chainsaw sawdust stuff. I guess I could check that. Whether that is getting oil through it or not. I mean, it should actually run out. Doesn't seem to want to. Which one's the petrol and which one's the oil? That's the oil there. There may not be any oil in this, or you would think that would come running out of that that hole. And no, my luck, it will as soon as I'm not looking at it, it'll come pouring out. Ooh, plenty of oil in there. But now that I want some air in there, will that actually. I think it's possible the actual. I would have thought that'd run out of there, but there's nothing coming out. Oh yeah, no, it has started. Looks like some oil's come down the line there. Oh, that's all right then. Chances are that hose or the. Well, I think I did check the little filter inside the tank, and it looked all right. I'll just get some rag and give this a bit of a clean up while I'm in here. A lot of dust and muck in it. Might as well get the worst of that out of the way. Okay, so that's the new pump. Got a little foam bit on there. Give that a clean one. Oh, yuck, that's totally soaked with oil. No, it's actually not even black coloured, it's yellowy coloured foam underneath it. Whoops, wrong pump. And I guess it doesn't really matter which hose we use. I'll put the new one in just in case that one's blocked up or something. I don't want to pull this apart more than once. So put that in there, then that just sits in there and the oil comes out and finds its way to the chain or to the bar, then the chain. So 
so it's quite a simple job once you get the thing to pieces to actually change this but getting the sprocket and stuff off is the main part of the job and like I say this one I had to get a couple of turns out of it, I think before it loosened off enough for you so they just once you sort of loosen them a bit bang them a quarter of a turn or something that's enough to get them loose and you can do them by hand but this one was really tight but anyway do everything up nice and tight because it is a chainsaw it vibrates a lot but probably don't overdo it because it's only into aluminium and these bolts probably ain't that strong anyway so I've got a little hose I've got to clean out that the rest of that little oil thing there and that's it I think except for the Pump in, I'll get all this muck out of here too. God, disgusting. At least you can get into the adjustment. There's a little adjustment screw there to set the rate of oil coming out of the pump. Just muck everywhere, of course. And what's this little thing here? Another little bit of foam. Some sort of little spring in there, I'm not sure what that is. So I put the new cover on there in case there's anything that cover's deformed or something. And that's basically it. We've only got the hose and the filter on the pump side left. And I should have some... That's where one of my own keys is. I just left it in here with the... The bits, I assume these four little screws hold, or well, three of them, but look at hold that cover on. What's this other bit I've got here? Not sure where that came from. And we've got a bit on here. Oh, that's where the fourth screw goes, so that explains that. Oh, that is the same size, so it looks like these are four millimeter as well. All the same size by the look of it. two or three weeks I think for this to come from China so I wasn't too bad the actual kit so that's why I forgot I had the Allen key in there because it's been sitting around for a while and then it's been another week or two since it arrived since until I've got around to have a look at this thing since I'm not in any hurry to use it at the moment but I better get this back together while I can vaguely remember what I'm doing that should be pretty tight Oh, lovely stuff. Now, yeah, plastic gear. Hmm, okay. Oh, don't tell me that's a different size, or am I just not, uh, not pushing hard enough? Seems a little tight, that one. It's definitely a bit looser, that one. Although that'll probably come with age, no doubt. Down into the pump, and yeah, it does. Well, that oh, maybe that's the problem because uh, that's got to turn with the actual. I don't know, the shaft does rotate in it, so it must rotate. It's got these bits here. I assume something sits. Oh, yeah, the end of the, the sprocket here goes down into that plastic bit. Yeah, the first so this first set of little T things on the inside here. Smaller diameter stuff. The chain obviously goes on these bigger ones. So that's what actually rotates this. So if that's oh, I'm gonna have to unscrew it now, not like that. I might put a bit of grease on that, I think, because that shouldn't doesn't want to be too tight. I mean like I say it'll soon 
soon wear it away a bit. Uh, it's got this Castrol LMM grease stuff should do. Just put a little bit on there just to lube that a bit. That seems to be the right kit. It's just, like I say, a little tight to start with. Yeah, that's a lot better. Oh, lovely stuff. Grease and oil and stuff everywhere. So that should be screwed down into the actual pump itself. And it's still screwing down into the Why does this all rotate, I wonder? Should actually be able to test it out and see if it... See if it actually pumps, but I'm not sure if I'm moving around the right direction. Let's see, I guess I'll pull the start cord. So it should go in a clockwise direction by the look of it. Whether that I'm going to get that to pump up or not, I don't know. Probably takes quite a few rotations to to get that oil up there. It's not a big job once you've got this off once to put it on and off again anyway. I'm going to put the bearing back in there too. That could probably do with a bit of grease as well while I've got it apart, I guess. It's definitely got some sort of grease on it, so I guess while I'm here... Grease doesn't cost nothing. And maybe a bit inside the, the sprocket. Probably doesn't want too much, just enough to get a bit of fresh lubrication on that bearing. Try and get this thing back together because it's, it's come apart. Is it even the right way around? Not sure it matters which way it goes. I just flat one side. Pretty sure that spring was pointing up originally. And yeah, it's compressed in onto this. I think I'm going to have to pull that apart to get this piece back in. There's a screwdriver. Oh, where's the halves? Oh, they're thirds. There you go, it lifts up. Oh, just be careful not to completely unspring the spring. Yeah, not sure how you're supposed to get that apart. Probably not the way I'm doing it, but... Yeah, maybe shove a couple of screwdrivers in there or something. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> oh, the spring joins to itself. Or well, maybe if I can get two bits together. After a bit of messing around, I used some little wood clamps just to basically hold the spring into its slot there, and then basically ram some, got some screwdrivers between these bits and turn them and opened them up and finally managed to get the center part of this thing back in. I mean it shouldn't normally come apart but because I had to bang this so many times and keep banging it all the way off just about it ended up I think that the bottom bit was staying down and this bit screwed up on its own and the two bits separated so it shouldn't really happen normally the whole thing should rotate as one bit but uh, I didn't have that much luck with this one looks like there's another washer I've got to put in on top of there top of the sprocket that must just let that sprocket move around a little bit. You can see the marks there, so it was definitely on there. And then we're going to have to wind this on anti-clockwise. Yeah, it is quite tight already. So yeah, there's definitely something up with these threads. So it's under, I can only get it about halfway on by hand, so that's pretty dodgy design. I don't really want to put grease or something on there because 
don't want this thing to be to be loose enough to come off again. So it looks like I have to bang it all the way back on, so I have to put my rope back into it. So yeah, just a bit of normal nylon rope, fairly small stuff. You can see the end of this is getting a bit messy where I've had it in there before. Probably should avoid having any really thin fibres sticking out because they can get stuck down the side of the piston in the rings and stuff, so just poke a bit of that in there. And the piston should come back up. In this case I'm gonna have to where do I put that little so I've just used this little chisel here to try and tap that back on and hopefully this clutch won't fall apart again. Might be a bit rubbery until it gets up to the, I'm not sure where the piston actually is. Oh shit, it's coming apart again. That's what I was afraid of. Oops, pressing on the bloody clutch. Yeah, that shouldn't be that tight, I wouldn't have thought. So I don't know if they haven't quite done the thread right on this one. Or what, but that is extremely tight. I probably should have put a little bit of lube on there because this is, shouldn't be this hard to reinstall this thing. It shouldn't have been that hard to come off in the first place. But, you know, it is made in China, so they've probably got something out of tolerance there. Well, they may do it on purpose, so you don't have much hope of fixing the thing. It certainly gets to be more hassle to fix than what it cost. Just have to try and pull that sprocket and everything back up. Stop the clutch for all the bits again. Gone, but it's surprisingly tight. Seems to be getting a bit looser now. So I'd say they've done a dodgy job of the thread here somewhere. Either on the crankshaft or the, the clutch itself, but it's slowly tightening up. Certainly not much chance of it coming undone on its own. I'll definitely get there now. Oh, it's pretty hard work though. I must admit I'm tempted just to leave it like that and not worry about tightening it up too much. work after all this. Yeah, I think that's tight enough. The threads got back to the front of that crankshaft and the clutch are pretty well flush there, so I think we'll call that good enough. Hopefully that goes the other way, does it? Yep. Yeah. Pull the cord a bit and the piston should drop. And we'll get the rope back out. Which means the spark plug can go back in. If I can get the thread to line up. Come on, you can do it. Let's get the tool. Okay. Tighten that up a bit. Now's when I probably discover I left something off. Yeah. Oh, that's right, I've got to screw this cover back on, I'll just clean that off as well, where I put that rag. Might as well clean as much sawdust off as possible, even though it's just going to build up again. How's that go? Like that by the look of it. 
And here's this other black plastic bit which I can't for the life of me remember where it came from. That's the oil thing. Yeah, hopefully I'll spot where that went. Eventually. So there's one little hex head in here. Oh, I can see where there's one of those covers on the back of the black cover there. So that must be something, maybe it is something to do. Ah, yeah, it probably fits on that bit right there. Just spotted it in the nick of time, just before I tighten this up. So there you go. That's a little black plastic bit there for whatever reason, whatever purpose that serves. Again, make sure that's nice and tight, but don't overdo it because can't really trust these bolts or the threads on them. So we should be ready to put the bar and chain back on. Oh, the that switched on or off the brake? I think that's off. Brake's a little tight on there for some reason, but it's just a matter of getting that around the clutch. Oh, yeah. I think that's what's blocking it. It does look a bit like it's on. Oh yeah, it was on. That won't help. Make sure the brake's off. The band is nice and large to hammer, it still doesn't want to go on though. There we go. Okay, I'll go and get the bar and chain and I, this thing should be a go. I'll see if it, I'll better plug the spark plug back in, I guess, and put all that back together. And it should be going, hopefully. And just a matter of... Uh, seeing if the oil sprays on them, maybe a bit of newspaper, or you can do it onto water, I think's one thing that'll certainly show you that the oil's coming out. Probably wear a nice new pair of pants, it's guaranteed to come out everywhere on your legs then. Put that back together, and I'll get the bar and train back on this thing. And see how it goes. You know, on the actual chain, you've got these couple of holes here. But next thing was also this little oil hole there. Should be one on the other side, I think. Yeah, depending on which way you put the bar up. But you just want to get a little fine screwdriver and just clean the sawdust out of that. And then make sure it actually comes through. That one's a bit too big for this job. Get a really little fine jeweler's screwdriver and you can just yeah, poke that down and just push the muck into there. If I can flick that out. And just make sure there's, because there's a little dip in the, the chain slot here. Just get all the muck out of there. Won't be muck right through it probably, but just make sure each time you have the chain off at least that you clean that out and preferably a bit more often. So the saw is running fine again. I went through and cut, went through a couple of tanks of petrol on this, and it's using about not even a whole tank of oil, but close to a tank of oil for every two tanks of petrol I put through it, which is something like what it used to do before, something about like what you'd expect. 
Um, so a lot better than it was um, before that. It was, I think, a couple of tanks. You'd be lucky if you went through a quarter of a tank of bar lube oil, which isn't really enough to if you start wearing out the chain or stretching the train or chain or something or wearing out the bar. So it definitely wasn't doing enough before. Um, now it's back to, yeah, you'd block, um, a tank for every couple of tanks of petrol, so that seems pretty reasonable. Um, when I put this out there, um, once I just started to saw off and ran it, I wasn't getting much spray off the actual of oil off the the bar or anything onto a bit of newspaper. So what you really need to do is run through, you know, cut through a decent sized log, and then try it again, and you should see a bit of oil spraying off after that. Once it's really got the got the oil spread around the bar and chain, and it's pretty well saturated. Uh, then you should get a little bit spraying off if you put it up against a bit of paper or some other sort of material that you can see it on. And that's always a good way to just check the saw if you're not sure if that's uh, any oil coming out. Just always yeah, see if they should actually spray a little bit off, but you may have to run the saw a bit before it'll get to that point. Um, once you've, after you first start it, it won't necessarily be wet enough to really spray anything off it. Probably get a few little splatters, but once it's once it's done like a full log or something, it should have enough all through the system and be nicely soaked and that should come off quite nicely but anyway thanks for watching and hopefully this thing will keep going for a bit longer